Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome to our latest Escape Room series, which is all about the fruit of the spirit. Now, this is not fruit that you can eat like pineapples and apples. It's a different kind of fruit. The Bible says that as we grow in our faith, we can let the Holy Spirit transform us, which means to change us, to be more like Jesus. That's what is meant by fruit. Now, I need your help to solve the puzzles and uncover the clues to find out more. We're going to be reading the Bible together and finding out what it means to be a follower of Jesus and how we do that in our everyday lives. Let's start by reading the Bible together. It's just two verses in the New Testament from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Oh, oh no. I've just been told that a bug has eaten a word on our database. Let's watch the video to find out what's missing. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Against such things there is no law. Oh dear, what is the missing word? What fruit of the Spirit is it? I need your help to uncover the missing data so we can find out. Can you help me? I think it's time to enter the escape room. Thank you for visiting. We're reminding our kids escape room. You have three minutes to find the keys and unlock the words. Look high and look low. Solve puzzles. But don't take too long. You must solve the puzzles and find the clues to restore the data before the time runs out. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, let's start over on the table. Oh, there's a TV remote. Okay, and uh, there is a steering wheel for an online game and a pair of football boots, don't know if they'll fit me, um, and, uh, and a football. Um, what do they all have in common? They all involve playing something? No, no buzzer there. Okay, what else could be the connection? Oh, of course, they all have the power over something. Oh, great, that means it's correct. The remote turns on the TV and changes the channel and volume. The steering wheel moves the car on the screen. And when a footballer wears those boots, the power from the kick moves the ball. Okay, what's next? Let's go over here. Some pictures on a screen. There is one of Samuel, who is one of God's prophets. There is one of Daniel in the lion's den and one of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane when he was arrested. What do these all have in common? Oh, could it be that, that they're all stories from the Bible? Okay, no buzzer there. That's correct, but not really the answer we're looking for right now. Well, the stories of Samuel and Daniel are in the Old Testament and Jesus' time on the earth was written in the New Testament. So what connects them? Oh, is it that they did what God told them to do? Great, that means it's correct. Samuel obeyed God when he told him to anoint the next king. He could have chosen any of David's brothers, but he anointed David because that is who God told him to anoint. Daniel was in the lion's den for he disobeyed King Darius because he wouldn't bow down and worship him because he would only worship God. And finally, Jesus, well, he could have hidden from the soldiers or run away because he knew exactly what was going to happen, but he chose to do as Father God had asked him to do and to rescue us so that we can be friends with God and be close to him, which was God's plan from the very start. Okay, last thing. We've got a word puzzle. Okay, there's two words joined together. Can you guess what it is? Let's start with a vowel. Okay, what about a U? Okay, uh, there's none of those. What about an A? None of those either. Okay, let's try and do another vowel. What about an E? Ooh, there's one of those. Okay, let's do an S. Okay, we have one of those at the start. Have you got it yet? Let's do an O. Wow, two of those as well. Uh, what about a G? None of those. Uh, what about an L? Oh yeah, two of those as well. Have you got it yet? Okay, let's go for um, let's go for a T. Um, okay, we got one of those. Um, uh, I think I have it, but let's do one last letter to make sure. Um, there is there an N and a C. Yes, the word is self control. <laughs> Great, that means it's correct. Well done. <laughs> Escape room complete. Congratulations, you have solved the puzzles and found the clues in the given time. 
you have a store to Las Vegas, you may now exit this game free. Let's reboot the database and put in the missing words. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Well done! Let's find out more about self-control in our Bible reading today. It's about a man called David. You can find it in 1 Samuel 24, starting at verse 1. Now Saul had chased the Philistines away. Then he was told, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So he chose 3,000 men from all Israel. He took these men and began looking for David and his men. They looked near the rocks of the wild goats. Saul came to the sheep pens beside the road. A cave was there, and he went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were hiding far back in the cave. The men said to David, Today is the day the Lord talked about. The Lord told you, I will give your enemy to you. You can do anything you want with him. Then David crawled near Saul. He cut off a corner of Saul's robe, but Saul did not notice him. Later, David felt guilty because he had cut off a corner of Saul's robe. He said to his men, May the Lord keep me from doing such a thing to my master. Saul is the Lord's anointed king. I should not do anything against him, because he is the Lord's appointed king. David used these words to stop his men, and he did not let them attack Saul. Then Saul left the cave and went his way. When David came out of the cave, he shouted to Saul, My master and king! Saul looked back, and David bowed face down on the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when people say, David plans to harm you? You have seen something with your own eyes today. You have seen how the Lord put you in my power in the cave, but I refused to kill you. I was merciful to you. I said, I won't harm my master because he is the Lord's appointed king. My father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but I didn't kill you. Now understand, and know I am not planning any evil against you. I did nothing wrong to you, but you are hunting me to kill me. May the Lord judge between us, and may he punish you for the wrong you have done to me. But I won't fight you. There is an old saying, evil things come from evil people. So I won't hurt you. Whom is the king of Israel coming out against? Whom are you chasing? You're not chasing someone who will hurt you. It's as if you are chasing a dead dog or a flea. May the Lord be our judge and decide between you and me. May the Lord support me and show that I am right. May he save me from you. David finished saying these words. Then Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? He cried loudly. He said, You are right, and I am wrong. You have been good to me, but I have done wrong to you. You told me what good things you did. The Lord brought me to you, but you did not kill me. If a man finds his enemy, he won't send him away with goodness, will he? May the Lord reward you because you are good to me today. I know you will surely be king. You will rule the kingdom of Israel. Now make a promise to me. Promise in the name of the Lord that you will not kill my descendants. Promise me that you won't wipe out my name from my father's family. So David made the promise to Saul. Then Saul went back home. David and his men went up to the protected place. David had had his chance to get rid of the horrid king who was chasing him. But David trusted God. He knew that he would be king in God's timing, not his own. He knew that he needed to wait. He knew that God had the best plan for him. He didn't need to force it and try to fix it. No, God was with him. That was self-control on display. And by trusting God rather than tr trying to fix it himself, King Saul left David alone and never went after him. In fact, he never saw him or his soldiers again. No more hiding. Something good came from having self-control. Now, it's not always easy to practice self-control. 
David didn't always get it right. We naturally want things done our own way, but self-control is saying no to the things that aren't good for us and saying yes to the things that are good for us. It means listening to God and acting how He wants us to. When we do practice self-control, we are saying, I trust you, God, and you have the best for me. And we are not on our own. With the Holy Spirit's help, you can control your thoughts, words and actions. And Jesus can help you to make the right choices. He can help you to think about how best to respond to a situation. James chapter 1 verse 19 says, Always be willing to listen and slow to speak. Do not become angry easily. And 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid. He gave us a spirit of power and love and self-control. Self-control is not simply a result of trying hard to do something, even though it is important to work to have self-control. Self-control in your life is evidence that God is at work as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It means not getting angry when someone is unkind or does something we don't like, but instead responding with kindness and gentleness. It means letting others go before us rather than always making sure we go first. It's about saying no to doing things we know are wrong. Like all the other fruit of the Spirit, it's something we have to practice and think about. They show us how we can be more like Jesus. The more they grow in our hearts, the more people will see Jesus in us. Let's go back one last time and do a quick recap of all the fruit of the Spirit. How many can you remember? Firstly, love. To love someone is to care deeply for them and to want what is best for them. Joy. Joy is more than just feeling happy when good things are happening. Joy is a deep, good feeling we have because we trust God in both the good and bad times. Peace. Peace is feeling calm and secure because we know that God is in control of our world. Patience. Patience is waiting our turn. Patience is not losing our temper or giving up, even if something takes a long time. Kindness. Kindness is considering what people need and then helping them with it. Goodness. God is holy and good and always does right. Goodness for Christians means trying our best to follow God's example in these things. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is being loyal and trustworthy. It means sticking with something or someone and not giving up too soon. Gentleness. Being gentle means not being rough or harsh. It means being careful and respectful of others. And finally, self-control. This means not losing our temper or always having to have our own way. It is waiting for our turn and considering others' needs before our own. The fruit of the Spirit shows us how we can be more like Jesus. The more we let this fruit grow in our hearts, the more people will see Jesus in us. I hope you have enjoyed finding out all about the fruit of the Spirit. It's time for me to go now. Thanks for all your help today. That's it from this series. Bye.